former deputy assistant to President Trump, Seb Gorka. And here in the studio in London with me, Sarah Elliott, chair of the UK division of the Republicans Overseas Group. Thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, Seb, let's get out to you first. Uh, as I understand, you're all going to be seeing Mr. Trump later on, and it was his, bir is his birthday tomorrow, so you're going to be uh, celebrating and wishing him happy birthday. Is it really a night for celebration? He hates celebrating his birthday and doesn't like to be reminded about his birthday. So, no, we're going to be... I'm leaving literally after this interview for Bedminster, uh, for his residence there. We're going to have a party, a celebration, a fundraiser uh, to celebrate the fact that they keep trying to kill the king and they always fail. And he's now more popular than he's ever been. Latest polling by CBS, which is a left-wing organization, puts him 38 points ahead of his nearest challenger, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. So the more they come after him, the more he just smiles. And if you haven't seen the video, it's viral. After he was in the courtroom today, he popped into a little cafe in Miami. And let me tell you something, he, <laughs> he bought everybody a lunch and he did not look like a worried man. He isn't a worried man. You talk about killing the king, but I think to some uh, some ears overseas or Democrat ears particularly, they just see it as a man who's broken the law, Seb. Yeah, well, that's garbage. You know, I've actually read the indictment and the fact of the law is that in 1978, Congress passed a bill called the Presidential Records Act that makes it very clear. A president, no president, can commit a felony with documents he generated during his presidency. Every president, from Jimmy Carter to Obama, including President Trump, retains the highest security clearance till the day he dies. And those documents, he can do with them whatever he wants to. He can't be charged with crimes because the 1978 Act is a civil act, not a criminal act. The idea that they're using a predated law from 1917 to do with espionage. What are these loonies saying that President Trump gave our nuclear launch codes to the Iranians. It's laughable. It's like it's like the Loretta Monty Python skit. It's mm. absurd. It's a joke. Uh, Seb, uh, thank you for laying out your stool most clearly. Let's come to Sarah in the studio on that to react, Sarah. I mean, uh, Seb very clearly talking about what, the, what Trump's party is talking about, saying it's all just a load of made-up garbage and it won't stand up in court. But obviously the prosecutors think it will. Yes, and it's very detailed. And in fact, there are recordings of President Trump, you know, talking to uh, journalists, showing uh, classified information to people who don't have security clearances. Uh, and, you know, even his own attorney general, Bill Barr, has said this is very serious. His attorney during the impeachment hearings, Alan Dershowitz, said this is the most serious of all the indictments before him. And in fact, we don't quite have the smoking gun, but we had the gun. So this is, uh, there's 37 counts here. Um, they're going to go through it one by one. And um, from Seb's uh, remarks there, we can see where the defense is going and where they're going to be lining up the, the argument in favor of Mr. Trump. But to the rest of the country, 48% uh, of Americans feel he has committed a crime uh, and that there has been wrongdoing. And even though 81% of Republicans are now rallying around President Trump, 14% like him even more, um, it's not just Republicans who elect president. Mm. It is um, independents, Democrats, moderates, and Republicans. So um, we'll just see how, you know, what plays out, but this is unprecedented. Now, I'm interested to get your view on uh, who else could be in the race then and represent the Republicans, mm -hmm. but let's get back to Seb. Um, because, Seb, let's just uh, get down to brass tacks here. Trump could be in prison, in jail, you know, campaigning as a president, could even feasibly, some are saying, be in prison as the president. Do you really want to support a man that does that, that is behind bars? I mean, what, what, what do you think that says about I, the Republican I, I guess, Party? I guess, like Yes, Nelson Mandela was a bad guy, right? Well, that's a slightly different set of circumstances. No, he was behind bars. He was, was behind bars. I don't know. I don't know who your guest is. The fact that she has the word Republican in her description is shocking. And I will be having words with Mr. Trump and her boss, Rona Romney McDaniel, because she sounds like she's representing the Democrat Party, no, not the Republican. No, I, I voted but for Mr. Trump in 2020. I defended him on... The Democrats, it's a bloody outrage. You should get a job 
with, you know, Hillary Clinton's campaign, okay? That's what your relevance Seb, is. Seb, do, I, do I support President Trump? I support President Trump because what we've seen today and for the last seven years is a fact pattern of political persecution. Just take one thing and one thing alone. Somebody called Robert Mueller, a former director of the FBI, was charged with investigating Russia collusion. He spent $30 million of my money, every U.S. taxpayer's money, for two years investigating my boss and his campaign and the administration I worked in. He couldn't, after two years and $30 million, find one iota of evidence. So now I'm supposed to trust the same DOJ today? No, this is, as the son of an escaped mm. political prisoner from a communist regime, let me tell you something. I've seen this before, and it is bloody un-American. The fact that they are charging the leader of the opposition, mm. who is the number one candidate who could take out Joe Biden in the election, uh, that's so, fine for Venezuela, so, it's fine for North Korea, but it's not okay for America. What increasingly we seem to see is that there's a difference being a Trump Republican and being a Republican. So I want to give uh, Sarah her chance to respond. Thank you. Um, Seb, listen, I defended President Trump for four years on all these networks in the UK. I voted for him. I didn't vote for him the first time. I voted for him the second time. I've defended him in some pretty nasty environments, by the way, by myself. I, I am concerned um, about the direction of our party because we need to win. We need to unify the country. Uh, and, and listen, I agree with you. I think this stinks. I think this um, indictment is hypocritical and is it, the law was not evenly played with Hillary Clinton and the Biden family, etc. I think there's a lot of criticism to go around, but I would like to see a new generation of leadership that can win and that can bring in, um, uh, can run two-year term, two terms in a row. Um, Mr. Trump can only do one term. And I want to see a unified Republican Party in a unified country. I want to get beyond the Biden-Trump warfare. And quickly, who is that, Sarah? In my opinion, it's Ron DeSantis. He's the only one in punching distance. 40 and points and it, he won 20 points, 40 points in the last election. Look, I'm very sorry we have to leave it there. Seb, I know you've got a date with Donald Trump anyway, so we'll let you get on to that. Sarah, it's been wonderful speaking to you too. Thanks so much for your insights.